Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Financial Survival, sponsored by Discount Gold and Silver Trading. I'm Melody Cedarstrom, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. It is Monday, and it is the 15th of June, 2009. Again, thank you for joining us this day. Hope you had a, a nice weekend this weekend and enjoyed some of that warm weather, at least I know here in the eastern part of the country. We've had beautiful weather, so I hope where you're at and if you're suffering through those storms in the Midwest, well, just take care, be safe, and uh, beware of those tornadoes. 800-375-4188 is our telephone number here at Discount Gold and Silver Trading, 1-800-375-4188. Take a few minutes and visit our website at discountgoldandsilvertrading.net. Discount Gold and Silver Trading dot net. There's uh, articles you can read. There's also you can listen to the programs that are archived on a daily basis. And uh, we appreciate you visiting the website. And of course, if you have any questions regarding your gold and silver coins and investments, you can email us at discountgoldandsilver at yahoo dot com. You can also use the same address for questions for the program. Discount Gold and Silver at yahoo dot com. Gold today, another little bit of a disappointment today in the gold market, down $11.10 at 928 We have silver down 77 at 1411 Platinum is down $45 at $12.15. And, of course, palladium is also down uh, $9 at 247 So, actually, with gold down just a little over 1%, it's certainly... Uh, uh, fared a little bit better than the uh, uh, white metal did. So uh, you have the U.S. dollar trading higher today. Higher today. So again, pressure on the U.S. Uh, on the gold market. 800-375-4188 for your complimentary issue to the international forecaster and Robert Chapman, editor and publisher, is joining us today, Wednesday and Friday from the international forecaster. Good afternoon, Bob. Well, good afternoon again. Had an interesting day today. Uh, early on, everything was off, and uh, since then, everything has been off as well. And uh, the the government tried its best to keep the stock market from collapsing, and uh, they held it around minus uh, 180 to 220 for hours. And it was obvious they were in the market trying to keep it from going well. The market should have been off probably 350, 400 points. And um, it wasn't, but um, that's because of the interference in the market itself. Um, you know, even early on, uh, the, all the indexes on the general market were off 100 points. And uh, early on, uh, which is 334 o'clock, uh, gold was off 7.20, and silver started the day down 55 cents. And so the government went after everything that they want wanted it their way, so to speak. They attacked commodities, gold and silver, and um, and they uh, tried to run the dollar up. They had the dollar up uh, on the USDX a point. What was it up on the day so far? Looks like it was up at uh, 0.81. Yeah, there's profit taking toward the end. It's been back and forth every day. Um, not much gain or loss in that USDX index. Uh, the um, uh, the um, the whole the, all the markets went down except for the dollar, and they they tried their darndest to keep the stock market up. And uh, they were, well, from going lower, I should say. One of the items I came up with, uh, I saw, and, and, the, and the media hasn't touched this, um, and, and for good reason. Um, there's a, um, uh, a former NBA, NBA All-Star basketball player, Kevin Johnson, and um, he uh, is the mayor of uh, Sacramento, California. And uh, he uh, was um, uh, given for his 
non-profit organization called Saint Hope. Um, he was given by Mr. Obama an AmeriCorps grant for eight hundred thousand um, dollars, and uh, out of the four hundred thousand dollars that was dispersed, seventy-two thousand uh, dollars, almost seven, almost seventy-three hundred thousand dollars. Johnson had to pay back, and the reason was they used it for personal things. Now, uh, this man should be pursued criminally for conversion and fraud against the government, and I don't hear any noise to that extent. I don't even see the the, uh, the story anymore. Uh, now, what's very interesting about this is not that this guy's a crook. Uh, he is, and he's a very close friend of our president. And uh, a law that was co-sponsored by our president called the Inspector General Reform Act of 2008 states that the Inspector General does not serve at the pleasure of the president. The Congress must be consulted with reasons for any Inspector General being fired, and it's clearly in decline, defined in the Act, and they have to give 30 days' notice. Now, the Inspector General, and his name is uh, Walpen, Gerald Walpen, had been appointed by the President. So after Walpen covered this, um, he got a message from the White House that he was fired and that, I guess he said to the person from the White House who called, I think his name was Lister, um, he said, well, do I have any comeback in it? They said, we'll give you an hour. And so the White House called him back 45 minutes later and said, well, what are you going to say? He said, well, I guess nothing. I, you know, I just did the right thing. And uh, for that he was fired. Now, this is the same kind of tactics that were used by the predecessors. Only this is against their own people, so to speak. Uh, and I think what the problem here is that the president was upset that this this fellow Walton did not contact the White House and say, "Look, your buddy over there, uh, this Kevin Johnson, stealing money, and um, and uh, I think you ought to go over and tell him to stop it before we have to bring criminal charges against him." And so that's really, I think, what it was all about at the presidential level, and they probably figured, well, he should have given us a call or something like that. And, uh... Look at Tony. And, um... Uh, so I think that's why they can them, but the point is they can't legally do it. But this is the kind of thing that should not, should not go on. You don't have to be political to be, uh... Uh, just concerned about this sort of thing. You you have to be for right and wrong. It's not a political issue. It's a uh, an issue of a crook being exposed by a government appointed employee by the president, and then for doing his job, the gentleman, Mr. Walton, was fired. And so, you know, we want to avoid this sort of thing in government. I mean, evidently, we can. Cannot. And the president said he uh, fired him because he lost confidence in him. Unbelievable. And the um, the commentary out of Washington was he performed his do duties exceptionally well. So I just uh, wanted to make note of that because I get sick and tired of all these crooks. And this guy.
guy is one of them. And obviously our president is too. And Barry Satori. At least that's the name what he went by before. He changed his name. Anyway, what do we got for questions here today? We got Melody. And she's uh, the ace at answering questions. And this is from whom? Let's see here, Jim. Last week they were talking about the weakening dollar and its ramifications and safe havens. Today they are talking about how Japan stated their continuing confidence in the dollar and that China and Russia still see the dollar as the reserve currency of the world. Even though I have read that China and Russia were looking to move the other way from the dollar. Incidentally, we'll find that out 